in this tutorial, I'm going to use a Goldson model to simulate daily uh, uh, precipitation. Use uh, this drawing from a historical time series data set from uh, a precip gauge in Salt Lake City, Utah. So the data itself came from online and is now in a spreadsheet that looks like this. Column A is the dates, and then the rain data is, is in uh, various formats, but we're going to use it here from column G. All right, so in GoldSim, the way to, well, the easiest way to do this is to simply copy and paste. Now we could load the data from the file and just read it from Excel uh, automatically, but for now I'm just going to copy and paste the data and put it right into what's called a time series. First thing I want to do is save the model. So I'm just going to call this tutorial one and put it on my desktop here. Now we'll go, and go ahead and create a time series element. And that's done by clicking on the inputs category button up here in the toolbar and then selecting time series. We'll put that here and I'll call this um, sip Precipitation underscore TS for time series. And then I'm going to describe it here. Uh, time series of daily average. And this just happens to be 1948 through 2018. Okay, and my units are on average millimeters, millimeters per day. That's the daily average rate, millimeters per day. Okay, I want to keep all of these, uh, the data definition settings the same, just use the default. And then to paste the records in here, I'll go to here and click on edit data. And what you'll see by default, the uh, any Goldson model is set up to run for an elapsed time, not a calendar basis. But eventually we're going to change that to run on a calendar basis. Um, but because it's set up to run for just a, an elapsed time with daily time steps, the time unit shown here for the uh, the records or the, the, the date time records is currently number of elapsed days. But I want to change that to calendar time. Note that if we set up our model to be a on a calendar basis, the default setting here would already be calendar time and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I just want to make sure that that's set up for calendar time because the, the values I'm going to be entering in here will be date time or date format and they won't be elapsed days format. Okay, so I'm going back over to the Excel file and I'm just going to select the entire column A of dates. Copy. Went back over to Goldson, paste. Now I need to do the same thing for that column. Yep, that's this one here. Copy, paste. Now when I say OK, Goldson will walk through the entire set and make sure that it's got values in every row, and it does. Then I click OK. So as you see in the time series, if I go back here and look at the dates, it's January 1, 1948 through January 1, 2018. So now I can come up here to the simulation settings of the model. And I'm going to change the time format to calendar time. Change the start date to 1-1-1948 and 1-1-2018. And then I'll keep this as a one day time step and say OK. Now I can run the model, right click on the element and look at the time history and it shows me a plot for all of those years. Now our model is ready to be using um, precipitation data. But before we end the tutorial, I want to show you one more thing that you can do with GoldSim. And that is to run a Monte Carlo simulation that samples the years randomly in our time series. So let's say that we want to do a future simulation for just a single year in the future. 
So I'll change the simulation settings to run for just one year in the future. So we'll say it's running from January 1, 2019 through January 1, 2020. Well, as of the date of this, uh, of this tutorial, when I'm doing it right now, it's um, partially in the past and partially in the future, but we'll just assume this is a future simulation and um, run, run it for a single year. Now, in order to sample our historic data set, we need to go to the properties here and, and then click on this more button for the advanced properties and then select what's called enable time shifting. And what this allows you to do is choose various ways of going into the time series and sampling it at random or sequentially. For now, we'll just randomly sample the time, the time series on an annual basis. So what that means is we can run many future one-year simulations and on each realization of this one-year period, Goldson will go through and pick a random starting point on January 1 for any random year in the, in the, in the time series. Now with that done, we need to create a permanent time history chart so that we can see, visualize the, uh, the results here. So I'm just going to now add the precipitation output so that it's put there. We can change the label a little bit there. Okay, the other thing I wanna do is change the simulation to run as Monte Carlo. So I'm going back to the simulation settings, clicking on the Monte Carlo tab, and now I'm going to run the simulation for a number of realizations. In this case, I just want to run it for 70 realizations because I only have 70 years on record in that time series. Okay, I get a warning telling me that um, all the results are not saved unless you attach the results to a time history, which we have done here. Okay, so now I run the model and I double click on the chart. And now what we see by default is what's called a percentile chart, showing the range of possibilities on any given day. So I could zoom in, for example, on a particular day, and I could see that it, based on the, the color coding down here, that um, there are different percentiles of possibilities of rain for that given point in time. The other thing I can do is come up here to the display option and select a statistic so I can see the mean rainfall throughout the year. I can also have put in a custom statistic um, that's actually defined inside the properties here and then compare those against other custom statistics. So for example, I could reference precipitation three times, same the same output, but then change the statistic that I'm going to look at. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, going back into edit mode so that I can make the changes to this. So I don't. I want to show the mean, but then compare that to the 90th percentile, and also compare it to the 10th percentile. Now, when I run the model, I can see those those um, differences. The 10th percentile um, would be considered a dry condition, and you can see here that um, for the entire uh, run. The 10th percentile means no rain, whereas the 90th percentile is up here. Okay, so you can see there are lots of different ways of viewing this. Another way is to look at an individual statistic. So we could look at the 99th percentile, which actually doesn't make a lot of sense with only 70 runs. So we'll keep this at the 90th percentile. Um, we can also look at the maximum that's ever occurred in any of these by going in here and saying 100% and that changes it to the max. So this is the max precip that occurred on any given day in all of those years on record. So as you can see, with just two elements in this model, we can do a lot to visualize the precipitation time series for this location. And this concludes our first tutorial on rainfall and runoff modeling in Goldson.